this is your review for activities 23 and 24. Um, if you're in regular Algebra 2, you've clicked on the wrong le link. There is a separate review um, because you did not cover all the same sections um, that Honors did. So check out the separate video um, for that. Okay, um, so we had a lot of problems because they're all pretty quick, um, simple ones, but we'll make sure to go over at least one of each type. So the first ones um, asked you to write a rule for g of x, and then they told you in the directions that g of x was f inverse of x. So <clears throat> this is using your inverse properties, so we'll just look at one of each, so we'll look at, let's do 6, which the original was f of x equals e to the x, and then we'll also look at 7, which was f of x equals log base 20 of x. So really there's not work to show per se here. You can show work if you want, um, but I had told you in class that some of these are really just intuitive because of our inverse property. Um, so if you want to show work, I'll show you how to do that. Um, if you just know the answer on these ones, that's perfectly fine with me. So our original here in 6 is an exponential, and we know that the inverse of an exponential has to be a logarithm. We also know that the base of the exponential has to match the base of the logarithm. So that means that when I write g of x, and make sure that you have g of x equals, because it does ask you to write the function, the logarithm that has base e is ln. And then since my exponent is x, that has to be my input value. So simply g of x equals natural log of x. Now if you really, really want to show the work, the original is saying y equals e to the x. When we find inverses, that means switch the x and the y, which would give us this. And then we would need to get the y alone. Well, in order to get y down from this tower, we have to take the logarithm with base e on both sides. So we do log, natural log of x equals natural log of e to the y. These would cancel. y would be alone, and we would put back in our other notation. So again, there is work. There's a reason why this is the answer. But on these ones, I'm perfectly fine with you just writing the answer if you know it. Likewise on 7, this is logarithmic, which means that my inverse should be exponential. The base of the logarithm has to match the base of the exponent. So this should be my inverse. Again, if you're looking for the work, then we would start out with this. And we would say, switch the x and the y, because that's what we do with inverses. And then use the swoop method because that's how we solve logarithmic um, equations. And so that would give us 20 to the x equals y, which is our function. So then this is our answer. Um, the next two, we're just using the inverse property. So both um, 9 and 10, same idea. Um, so we'll look at 10, where we've got 12 to the log base 12 of x power. So the key here is that I have an exponential of base 12 and a logarithm of base 12. Those cancel each other out, and the only thing left is the input value here, which is x. Remember that the answer is not always x. The answer is always whatever is the input value here, or on the other form, whatever is the exponent. So then that is our answer for 10. The next ones are the ones that you are supposed to um, change an exponential into a logarithmic statement and vice versa. So kind of similar to the inverses, um, but not exactly the same. Um, so let's see. Let's look at, which one do I want to look at? Let's look at 14 which started out 2 to the negative third equals 1 over 8. And we're supposed to write it as an exponential. 
or as a logarithmic because this is exponential. So again, you have to make sure that the bases match. So I know my answer should be log base 2 of the input value becomes this guy, 1 eighth equals the exponent, which is negative 3. So that one started out exponential, and we wrote it as um, a logarithm. The next one we're going to look at, we start with logarithmic, and we are writing it as an exponential. So here is my logarithmic statement. So remember to go from logarithmic to exponential. We're using the swoop method. Remember that the base of the natural log is understood to be e. So this would be e to the sixth equals x. And that's it for those. Next section had you either expanding or condensing the logarithms. And again, we'll look at one of each of those. So one where you had to expand, one where you had to condense. So, <coughs> excuse me, um, we'll look at 20... Six first, which was log base four of x, oops, I wrote too big, x to the eighth over five. So again, when we're looking at these, you look at the input value and you ask yourself, what operation is that? Because that's going to tell you what property to use. So here, the operation that I see is division. So that means I need to use the quotient property, and the quotient property uses subtraction. So I'm going to expand this using subtraction. So log base 4 of the numerator minus log base 4 of the denominator. Now I'm not finished here because I have another rule that needs applied, and that's my power rule because I have an exponent on my input, which that gets kicked out to the front, so the final answer, 2 log base 4 of x minus log base 4 of 5. So this was expanding. We took a single log. We wrote it as multiple logs. Remember that you also need to be able to go the opposite direction um, and to condense. So we're going to look at um, number 29 for that which started out natural log of 5 plus 2 times the natural log of x. So the first thing I do is notice this number in front because that tells me I have to use the power rule. So I take this guy and I make it the exponent. So my first step here tells me I have natural log of 5 plus the natural log of x squared. Then I look at the operation between the two and it's addition. Addition condenses into multiplication through the product property. So I multiply the input values. 5 times x squared is just 5x squared. So this becomes the natural log of 5x squared. And then I believe this was a multiple choice question. I think this answer is maybe choice C. Um, that's what I wrote down anyway. I don't have it in front of me. But natural log of 5x squared is what you should have gotten. Okay, next section, you were evaluating um, without a calculator. I'm going to move this over for a second because I can't scroll. Mm. There we go, sorry. So now um, we're going to look at a couple of those. We're going to, um, well, just one of them actually. We're going to look at number 37, which is log base 3 of 81. Again, this is without a calculator, non-calculator part of the test. So in order to be able to evaluate this without a calculator, we need to be able to write 81 with a base of 3. So you have to know what power of 3 81 is. Now that shouldn't be hard because 3 um, to the first is 3. So, okay, not that. 3 to the second is 9. 3 to the third is 27. It's 3 to the fourth that gives me 81. So I can rewrite, this is my work, which is required. You have to show me this so I can see how you're getting the answer. So the base of the logarithm and the base of the exponential, those cancel each other out. And my answer is just 4. 
Next section, directions asked you to take the logarithm and rewrite it as a base 10 logarithm and then use your calculator to evaluate. Some of you only did one of those things. You must follow the directions. So on number 39, um, you had log base 20 of 4. Again, the first part of the direction said to rewrite that as a logarithm in base 10. So this is the change of base formula, which remember is log of the big number over log of the small number. So the first part of the answer is log of 4 divided by log of 20, because these are base 10 logarithms. So I rewrote it in base 10. Then I can use my calculator to evaluate. Again, if you have a newer calculator, you can go to your math menu and use the log base if you want. If you don't, then you'll actually have to type in the log of 4 and then divide that by the log of 20. You should get 0.463 for the second part of your answer. All right, we are going to look at the graphs then of logarithms. In the first half of the chapter, we graphed exponentials. So here we were looking at graphing logs. So we had f of x equals 3 log base 2 of x and then minus 1. So first you had to describe the transformations. So I've got a vertical stretch by factor 3. I have a vertical shift down 1. So this is my shift, this is my stretch. Remember that logarithms, the, pa the parent pattern in general, looks like this. Um, so because my base, my B value is 2, that means in this specific instance, um, the T chart that I'm going to be using is 1 over B, which is 1 half, negative 1, 1, 0, and then 2, 1. All right, so when I go to plot, and let's draw some axes here, so we'll need those. are not very neat, sorry. Okay, when we go to graph, we always do the shifting first. So the fact that I have a vertical shift down one, remember we did like the little plus sign thing, um, means that where this red is becomes my new origin. Now typically we would also draw in our asymptote here. Remember on logarithms they're vertical asymptotes. Um, I obviously, you can't really draw it. Um, it's on top of your axis um, unless you happen to have a different color like me. But that's where our um, asymptote's going to be. Then from this new origin is where I'm going to apply my parent pattern. Now this one has a stretch which means Vertical stretch means multiply the vertical column by the value of the factor. So this gives me negative 3, this gives me 0, this gives me 3. So that tells me the points I'm going to plot. So from this new origin in red, I'm going to go right 1 half and down 3. So right a half, down 1, 2, 3, and plot my first point. Then from that new origin, I'm going to go right 1, up 0, and then write 2, 1, 2, up 3, 1, 2, 3. Um, so this is my asymptote. The fact that I squished my um, axes aren't very evenly spaced makes this look messy, but in your answer sheet it should look a little better than that. Um, so this is what your graph should look like. Um, remember that you do not have to graph the parent. Um, I had said that. Then let's do 46 also just because it's a little bit different. So we'll look f of x equals log base 2 of x plus 3 minus 4. So the transformations that I have here are a horizontal shift left 3 from this guy. And then this guy gives me a vertical shift down 4. 
So when I draw my axes, Two, three, four. Right. Trying to space them a little better this time so that my graph won't look so awkward, but we'll see. It's hard to draw on um, this tablet when it's on the screen like this. Okay, so parent pattern um, starts off the same because it has the same base. It's still a base two logarithm, so. I start off with this guy, and this time there's no shrink or stretch in front, which means the parent, the parent pattern is the pattern. So I need to do my shifting, left three, down four, so one, two, three, and then down four. It should be right here. So there's my new origin. Again, I should at this time be able to plot my asymptote on logarithms. It's a vertical one when you do the exponentials. Remember, it's horizontal. And so then plot my points from that origin, right a half, down one, then right one, down zero, right two, up one. That shape looks a little bit better. And then again, make sure that your graph does not cross the asymptote. All right, so that wraps up activity 23. Then, sorry, I gotta move it over a second again so I can scroll. In activity 24, um, you had the equations. So we're gonna look at, again, the various types. You had exponential and logarithmic. Um, equations both. So we're going to look at a couple of the different types there. So um, we're going to look at 2b first as an example, first example of an exponential. So no matter which type of exponential it is, your first step is to get the exponential alone, get the power by itself. So here I need to divide both sides by 8 first. So that gives me 3 to the x equals 27. So once I have done that, I have to determine which type of exponential this is because it will make a difference in how you show your work. So this guy is one that we can use by rewriting the base because 27 is a power of 3. So the next thing you should do is write 3 to the x equals 3 to the third. And then, because the bases match, we can drop the bases and just set the exponents equal, which gives us x equals 3. So 2b, um, 2c, 2d, all like that. Rewrite the bases first, and then solve the equation um, that remains. Now, the other type of exponentials is where we are unable to rewrite the base um, and make them match. So we're going to look at 3c as an example of that. So when we look at this guy, again, no matter which type it is, our first step is to get the exponential by itself. So first I'm going to add 5. I've got 3 raised to the 2x plus 1 equals 85. So the difference between 2b and 3c here is that 85 is not a power of 3. So I cannot rewrite the base, make them match, and drop them off. I have to get the exponent down, because the variable's in there, by taking the inverse of the exponential, which is a logarithm of base 3. So whatever I do to one side, which is log base 3, I must also do to the other side. So I take log base 3 on both sides. The reason I do that is because on the left, then these are going to cancel each other, and I just have 2x plus 1. So now I have to use a calculator, so obviously this would be on the calculator part of the test. Um, so you type in log base 3 of 85. Remember, if you have an old calculator, you'll have to use change of base, log of 85 divided by log of 3 to do that. Once you have that answer, again, it's okay to write the answer down 
um, to record it, but please do not use a rounded value. Keep the value in your calculator. So what I mean is when your calculator pops out the answer that looks like this but with more digits, don't just use these digits. Take the answer in your calculator and then press minus one, enter. That obviously is going to give you 3.0438, whatever the rest of it is. Then press divided by two equals, and then that will give you the accurate answer. I think it said to round to three decimal places, which is 1.522. So um, 2H, um, 3C, 3D, um, 3F are all that type, where you have to take the logarithm, a logarithm, on both sides to solve. Um, number five is a compound interest um, problem. So just as a reminder, I'm actually not going to do this because it's from activity 21 and 22. Um, but just a reminder of the formula for that. So number five, you should have been using this formula. Um, we are going to look at number six because that's continuously compounded interest, which was in the second half of the chapter. Um, the formula for continuously compounded interest is different. That's the PERT formula. So it asked how long it would take um, you to double four thousand dollars if you're paying if you're being paid seven percent interest compounded continuously. So. If it's asking you how long it takes to double, that means the amount you're going to get at the end is twice as much as what you put in. So it told us we're putting in 4,000, so that means what we get out should be 8,000. The R, 7% is a decimal, is 0 0.07, and how long it's asking for us to solve for time here. So I need to solve for T, so first thing I do is divide by 4,000 on both sides. That's lucky because it comes out evenly, so 2 equals e to the 0.07t. Now, this is just like what we did in 3, because in order to get that down, I need to take the logarithm that has base e on both sides. That happens to be ln, so I take the natural log on both sides. On this side, those cancel, and I just have 0.07t. So then in your calculator, you type in natural log of 2, enter and then press divided by 0 0.07, enter, and then that should give you 10, about 10 because it's 9.902, so about 10 years is how long it would take to double. All right, last ones, yay! Scroll down again. Um, the last type are the logarithmic equations. Um, so you have a couple different types here, um, and again, I'll look at um, one of each type here for you. So 9b is our first type, log base 4 of 2x minus 3 equals 2. This is our single logarithm type, and when you just have one logarithm, we solve that by using the swoop method. So 4 to the second power equals 2x minus 3. 4 squared is 16. Add the 3, so 19 equals 2x, which means x equals 19 over 2. So single logarithm, that's the first type. Second type is like 9c, where you have two logarithms, but no extra stuff. Now remember, um, Sometimes the logarithms are not on the same side to begin with. And the first step of these ones, when there's two logarithms and nothing extra, is to get the logs on opposite sides. So here they already were, but if they're not, we did an example in the notes like that where we had to move something over. So this type is the easiest type, because when you have two logs with the same base on opposite sides and no extra stuff, we drop the logs and just set the input values equal. So 5x plus 3 equals 3x plus 11. So I can combine my like terms here and find that x equals 4. All 
All right, so that's the second type of logarithm. The third and final type is where you have multiple logarithms and you've got something extra. So we're going to look at f, log base 2 of x plus 6 minus log base 2 of x equals 3. So I can't solve this the same way I did c because I've got this pesky 3 over here. So the steps on this type, remember, are to get the logarithms on the same side first and then use your properties to condense. So subtraction condenses into division. So my first step is to write this as log base 2 of x plus 6 divided by x equals 3. Once I have it written as a single log, then I can do like what I did in 9b. I can use my swoop method. 2 to the third equals x plus 6 over x. 2 to the third is 8. Now I need to get this x off the denominator, so multiply by x on both sides. So I've got 8x equals x plus 6 minus x minus x. So 7x equals 6, which means that x equals 6 over 7. Now, remember, on logarithmic equations, you have to check your solution. So I'm going to go back and check all three of these to make sure that they work. So if I plug in 19 over 2, I'm going to end up with 19 minus 3, which is 16. The log base 4 of 16 is 2. So check. I know that works. Then this one. If I plug in 4 here, that's going to give me log base 7 of 23. Over here, 12 plus 11 is also 23, so that works. And then finally over here, um, this would give me log base 2 of 6 and 6 sevenths minus the log base 2 of 6 sevenths equals 3. So, um, you can use your calculator to help you check this. Um, again, you don't have to do it by hand. This one I can't do in my um, head, at least not as quickly as I can type it into the calculator. Um, but if you take these and you punch them in, you do get confirmation that this is true. So we did not have any extraneous solutions this time. But again, you have to remember to check for them. All right, that is all. Happy studying.